Hey guys, in this video we'll cover adding and deleting meshes. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. So go up to your file menu option and pick new, general, there's no need to save the file you were working on, so you can click Don't Save. Now you might end up with roughly the same thing that you had there, because we're just gonna start with the default cube again. I just wanna make sure we're on the same page. In this lesson, we'll talk about adding and deleting meshes. Now because you start with a default cube here in Blender, we've already got a mesh, so we're gonna work backwards by talking about how to delete this mesh first before talking about how to add meshes. So to delete the mesh, it's already pre-selected here. We see this orange outline. We'll talk more about selection later, but since it's already pre-selected, now we can delete it by using the keyboard shortcut. And don't skip over doing this. We really want to master our keyboard shortcuts here. So hold down your shift key and then the letter X. Now you'll notice that you have a delete option come up. You can either click it with your mouse or just press enter on your keyboard and you've deleted that mesh. So that's Shift X, and then you confirm by hitting Enter or clicking on the Delete button. Okay, so that's simple enough. That's how we delete an entire mesh. We'll talk about how to delete a single vertex, an edge, or a face later. But right now we're just talking about entire meshes. Okay, now how do we add a mesh? Hold down the Shift key and press the letter A, and you'll get the Add menu. You'll notice that you have a big long list of things that you can add here in Blender. Right now, we're not worried about anything other than mesh, which is our first category. We'll cover some of these other things later. And then in the flyout to the right, you see that you have several options of meshes that you can add. Let's start by clicking on the very first one. So you can click with your mouse on plane and you will add a plane. It will be a rectangle. Now what I want you to do as you go through this lesson is imagine where the bits and pieces of geometry lie with anything. So I'm going to roll the mouse wheel forward a little bit to zoom in. And again, just to practice mentally what we learned in the previous lesson. There are four vertices here. They would be at each corner. There are four edges. So those are the lines that are between each vertex. And then there's one face here. And even though this is just a single face and it's not a series of faces all attached together, it's still considered a mesh. So a mesh can be another name for a single face or a name of connected faces. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Okay, so we're gonna practice adding a few different meshes, and we're gonna practice deleting each one as we go. And while this might seem very, very basic, it's really important to start to ingrain these keyboard shortcuts right now. And then with each new one that you add, we'll uncover a few extra features that we haven't covered yet here. So please follow along. Let's delete this one. If you remember, hold down the shift key and then press the letter X. Then you can hit the enter key to confirm that you wanna delete that. Then let's remember how do we add we hold down shift and press the letter A. You don't even need to use your mouse. You could use the arrows on your keyboard to press the right arrow and now you're over in the list and you can start pressing the down arrow till you get to another thing that looks interesting. Let's go with the UV sphere and press enter. Now the UV sphere pops up. And again, think about where the vertices and the edges and the faces are. So if you roll your mouse wheel forward just a bit, you can see that even though this is a sphere, it's actually still made up of several faces or polygons. And these faces look like they're rectangular. So I see a rectangle here and there would be four vertices and four edges that make up just this rectangle. And then another one to the side and another one to the side. And so these are all stitched together to give you the appearance of a sphere. 
Now you might say this is way too faceted of a sphere for the types of things I need to build, but don't worry, there are several ways that this ends up looking perfectly smooth in the end, and we'll cover all of those aspects later. But for right now, so long as you haven't done anything else after you've performed an operation in Blender, you'll have a little panel to the bottom left here that's the Adjust Last Operation panel. Notice that it says Add UV Sphere. That's the last operation we did. Go ahead and click on it to expand it, and you'll see that you can adjust some things about that last operation. So when we're adding a mesh, you'll be able to adjust some things about that mesh. As we'll see with other tools, we may use a tool on an existing set of geometry, and then we can adjust something about how that tool just worked. So here, let's try a few things. Up at the top, we see segments. Now there are three ways that you can manage this. You can hover over and click on the left arrow and reduce the segments one by one. Notice how it's adjusting the number of segments. So there were 32 segments that would go around the sphere, and now there are only 26. So that makes these rectangles slightly bigger or wider. So you could keep clicking several times till you could really see those elongating this way. You can also hover over the number area, so not over the actual arrows, but the number. Click, hold down, and drag to the right or to the left to quickly adjust those segments up or down. Notice that when you go way down, it really changes the nature of the shape. And then the last thing you can do is you can double click there and then press backspace and then decide, you know, I want to do 16. So you can type in 16 and press enter and you can adjust it manually that way. So you see here that with each different mesh, there'll be some different things that you can affect. So segments would be the segments across this way. Rings here, if you go down by clicking this, you'll notice that rings are the segments as you go vertically here. So you could make this much more segmented or with both of these, you could click and drag to the right a bit, click and drag to the right a bit and come up with something much more sphere-like again. You'll see that with the radius, if you click and drag that to the right or to the left, you're making this bigger or smaller. And the M is for meters. So by default, Blender is using metric units. And for the upcoming few lessons, we're gonna stick with metric units. Much of the world is on metric units. And if you're in a country like I am that uses the imperial system, I will show you later how we can change those units to imperial units if you'd prefer to work in those. But for right now, we're not too worried about the accuracy of the size of things just yet. But just know that's what the M is. Now, location and rotation, we're not going to do anything with that just yet. We're going to be covering those types of transformations very soon. And then we'll remember that we can jump back in this area to control those things. Now, when you're done doing something in the last operation panel, you can either click here on this top area to collapse it down. So long as you don't do something else, it'll still be available to click again and adjust some things. But notice if you click here on the name to collapse it down and try this, click once out here in space, and you've deselected the sphere, you know that because there's no longer an orange outline, and you've also lost the adjust last operation panel. And you can't really get that back unless you delete this and add the sphere all over again and start from scratch. There are other places that we can affect how many rings, how many segments, what the size of the radius is and so on. And we're gonna to get to that in a future lesson, but just know that if you don't see that last operation panel, you probably did something inadvertently that caused Blender to think you were moving on to the next thing. Okay, so now I want you, before you move on to the next lesson, I want you to challenge yourself to delete this mesh and to add a new mesh and go through each of the different mesh types, play around with the adjust last operation panel and really get the hang of using the keyboard shortcuts to delete meshes, add meshes, make some adjustments on the fly, and think about where are the vertices, where are the edges, and where are the faces in each mesh. So I'm gonna go through it one more time with you, but I want you to do this a few times. Even if it seems repetitive, what you're actually doing is already starting to ingrain your first keyboard shortcuts. You're also starting to teach your mind slowly what the geometry is, what the underlying nature of what you're gonna be doing in Blender. I promise you these lessons will continue to pick up speed very quickly, so right now, Take the time to take it easy and just really get the hang of this. So again, 
because we deselected this, it must first be selected. So click with a left mouse button to select it. Remember the keyboard shortcut for deleting is shift X, then press enter to confirm you want to delete. Then remember the keyboard shortcut for adding is shift A. You can use the arrows on your keyboard to cycle down through what you want to try. I'll go to Taurus and click enter. I'll see that the Taurus is some sort of ring-like shape. Go down to the adjust last operation panel, click on it, and see what kind of things you can change. I'll click and drag the major segments down and realize I can get this to be something like a rectangle or even a triangle in nature. I can also adjust the minor segments to make it smoother or more faceted. And you can play around with different elements here. Once you've done this, I'd like you to delete it and then add another mesh. Take a quick look at it, see what options are in the last operation panel, delete it and go through each one until you've gone through all of them. And you have a fairly good sense of what these meshes are that you can add. These are also commonly known as primitives. And surprisingly, even though there's a very short list of these primitives or these meshes, a lot of the things that you'll build in Blender actually start with one of these meshes. And then you'll see there's very powerful tools to transform them into what you actually want to make. So go ahead and play with that. And once you're all done, you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson where we'll work on transforming these objects and meshes that we're adding now in Blender. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending. Thank <laughs> you.